Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Cami and Karen Go Keto, our transition into a keto lifestyle from the standard American diet and some carnivore in there. This is the uh, fifth video in a series, our final video where we're talking about eating off plan and binge eating and um, just trying to make it through this transition. And in our previous videos, we had talked about how when I got out of my routine, it really threw me for a loop and I felt very vulnerable. I felt like it was easier to be sneaky and I fell off a cliff and off of my food plan and then found out some difficult news in my family and proceeded to go to Aldi to buy some steaks. And while I was there, I had um, purchased other items such as cookies and cheesecake and proceeded to eat that in the parking lot and then went to Wendy's and had a junior cheeseburger combo with some Cinnabons um, melts, some Cinnabon melts and ate all that food. Well, I didn't finish the fries or the Coke, the Diet Coke I also had, but it was uh, awful to do that to myself. I feel my benches have changed. They're not so much for the satisfaction of, they, they don't feel so much for relief. I used to really feel like I would do them to get a sense of relief and comfort. And now I tend to feel afterwards uh, where, and before I would feel such shame and guilt afterwards. Now what tends to happen afterwards is I feel sad because of the destructive behavior I've just given myself and that I've, and then the aftermath of trying to heal from that, which is days, days long. So that's just brutal. The cravings and the inflammation and the pain and the swelling and um, heartburn I haven't had this time around, which I'm really surprised. So yeah, that's what I've been up to lately, Karen. <laughs> Well, we did talk a little bit about this. Um, so we think Aldi is a great place to go for steaks. I would stay away from those other items that Cami mentioned. But, you know, one of the things we talked about after Cami said that is, you know, if this is an issue that people have, there's always a way to find a strategy to stop that behavior uh, for the future. But sometimes those those cravings or those urges and the compulsion to do something just outweighs your strategy. So the reason why you put the strategy, why you have to have way more than one strategy is because uh, our brains, you know, to me, it's like watching a rat run a maze, right? It will do, it will go every which way until it can finally get to that sugar cube because, or that little heroin cube that they give them uh, because that's how our brains are. So the strategy here would be if going into the grocery store is a trigger, and it, it's got to be a trigger for a lot of people, 95% of the grocery store is something that you cannot eat on a ketogenic or carnivore lifestyle. And, um, you know, especially the center, you can't eat anything in the center, maybe stuff in the frozen foods, stuff in the deli. Uh, maybe if you if you eat vegetables, then, you know, you can eat stuff in the, obviously in the fruits and vegetable aisle. But um, so you can have your food delivered. It's not that expensive, especially uh, I know my mom has heard we have deliveries from Walmart all the time. And when you get used to it, it's a nice time saver. So you can figure out, uh, is, it, is it something that's worthwhile for your lifestyle? Is it, is it important? Is it that important to you to stay out of the store? Um, is it, so did you have a shopping list when you went, Cammie? No. Yeah, so having a well, shopping list. I actually list. did. I was going to go in and I was going to get meat. I was going to get soda. And I was going to consider getting um some yogurt, some Greek yogurt if they had if they had some low enough in carbs. Those were the three things I was going to go get. And is the soda on the plan or no? No. And was it a written list? No. Yeah, see the written list helps because it guides you. And then if you, and I can honestly say I've been in the grocery store with seven things on my list and I still don't see one of the things and I go in and get six of the seven and I forget the seventh item. But, um, but if you just, it, you know, that's a strategy. 
If it's not written down, it doesn't go in the cart. You know, and a lot of this is just talking to yourself and what, you know, a lot of it, our, the, the compulsions and the destructive behavior can be rooted in negative self-talk or destructive self-talk. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, negative. So you can say, well, I'm going to get everything on my list. And if you have, you know, two pints of ice cream, chocolate and all that on your list, that's one thing. But, you know, you can share that with somebody and say, hey, this is my shopping list. What do you think about it? It just depends on really how what your why is as to why you're trying to do this because clearly you can stay on the same path if you know if you don't want to really can you know transition to a ketogenic lifestyle or carnivore lifestyle or you can do the things that you know will help you go and you know get the successful results that you want so now knowing that and you know going into you know so like you didn't go to the 711 you know for me I try not to drive anywhere near the Oberweiss Dairy Place because that's my chocolate malt hangout. Now, the other day I went somewhere and I was close to the Dairy Queen where I sometimes got chocolate malts, especially Tim and I always went to Dairy Queen. He wouldn't go to Oberweiss. So the Dairy Queen was close by and I almost went there. I was thinking about it, but I said, no, I am not. I don't drink chocolate malts anymore. That's just not who I am. And so I said, no. Uh, I am not that person yet who does, who says she doesn't drink Diet Coke and still, I did not have a Diet Coke today. I think I did have one yesterday. Um, so I got to get back into that routine of not drinking the Diet Coke. So stay away from McDonald's. That's where I like the Diet Coke. That's usually my, my big mm. downfall is the Diet Coke at McDonald's. So there are things that we can do. And then, you know, you have to, and I think that for you, I don't think you really have a morning routine to keep you on a ketogenic path yet. And that might be something to to look at. Yeah, I'm still working. Well, for the next few days, I'll be working on getting over this lovely off plan and binge eating I did. But um, I'm still trying to work on the OMADs and some prolonged fasting. I was talking to Jeff, you know, our last video was talking about me weighing in with Jeff Cotterman, my nutrition and fitness coach. And we both know and think that the only way to get me into some ketosis was with the high insulin resistance that I have is longer fasting periods. And that's what I'm working on. Go back to steak and butter gang and look at what they have to say. So you know, they, they're, they're, they're kind of the key or, I mean, there are other fasting, you know, people you can get fasting information from, but they really talk about priming your body so that you have enough food. And I mean, think about it. If you binge yesterday and you ate today, then maybe today, you know, stop now and try to go, try to go 30 hours and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it might be what they call white knuckling it, but you know, you might be able to do it and it might not be white knuckle. It might be pretty easy. Yeah, I'm I'm going to I ate my chipotle at one o'clock. So we'll see how it goes. And you've had it where you fasted and then looked at the clock and gone, oh, hey, it's already been 24 hours. Who knew? Yeah, maybe once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I think then it wasn't 24 hours. I think it was 24 hours. And then you did another two hours because of I wherever think I you did. were. There was one time yeah. I did like 26 hours. But, you yeah. know, remember, Karen, you, you, you talk about how it, when we first started this channel and I was like, oh, there's no way I can do that. I know. And you said something just a few minutes ago. You said, well, I'm, you know, I'm working on the next couple of weeks of doing getting over this binge or whatever. The next few days getting over this binge. Yeah. No, this is a lifestyle right? It's, you got the rest of your life to get over this, right? This is just one more day. Those were all in the past. Can't undo it. So we just move on. Onward and upward. Onward and upward. But we do have to do something, put something in place for that cruise for you. Cause I don't want that to be such a struggle. Yeah. That will have to be some good brainstorming in a couple yeah, of videos. And, maybe. and you should uh, call that cruise line ASAP. I will. I'm going to ask them about on, the sugar addiction meeting. Yeah. All we'll right, do. guys. Thank you. Hey, we'll you take care. Yep. Thanks for watching us. We appreciate it. Bye.